What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Nick with Leverage Media, and welcome to another episode of Path to a Million Podcast. I'm here with one of my uh, my good buddies, uh, Baron Ho. Uh, Baron, say hello to the people. What's going on, everybody? All right. Uh, so Baron is uh, is a talker. I am a talker, so I apologize if this one goes a little bit long, <laughs> but we got a lot of good value to share today. So Baron, for those like handful of chiropractors that don't know who you are, uh, Give them a little bit of background of, of your expertise. Uh, sure. Well, I'll, I'll keep it pretty simple. I'm not a chiropractor. I'm celebrating my 27th year in the industry. Um, I call myself, I'm the self-proclaimed biggest groupie that the profession has ever had. So uh, I just fell head over heels in love with it in the mid 90s. Um, I owned clinics. I started consulting, um, did that for a number of years, became kind of the guy in the early 2000s for coding and documentation, got some certifications in that. And, and really, that's where I kind of made my name in the profession, traveling around the state associations, uh, explaining to people how to be able to code and document, remain compliance without wanting to leave practice. So I, I've always been a very motivational guy, believing in the story of chiropractic and teaching people how to do that. Um, I did that again for another, about 10, 15 years. Then I took over as the executive director of the Ohio State Chiropractic Association. So I served in the nonprofit side and the kind of the politics of the profession, if you will, for about six years. Um, then in 2016, I started um, my nonprofit, One Chiropractic. And then last year, I started opening clinics again. Um, and uh, the goal is to have five of those in the next two years around Columbus, Ohio. So uh, my daughter's uh, seventh quarter at Sherman right now. So she's in chiropractic school. And then my son will be headed to life um, in uh, the fall of 23. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, you say that you're the biggest groupie, but I've, I've seen you uh, do karaoke before. So you have your own. I've been known to hit a mic a time or two. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen Baron do uh, karaoke, I strongly recommend it. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I want to start off by talking about um, uh, the office. You know, you started uh, pretty much like a year ago now, right in the middle of the pandemic. And then I also want to talk about uh, One Chiropractic and all the work, uh, great work that you do for the profession uh, as a whole. So let's let's talk about the, the office uh, first. So you guys started up right as... I mean, May 26th, I think you said. Yep. So pretty much like at the peak of the of the uh, COVID panic, um, probably not an ideal time to be ramping up uh, your uh, your marketing and uh, your networking. But because I'm sure, like you as uh, as a natural born networker, we're ready to get out and start pressing. Yeah. Push. So uh, talk to me a little bit about that. What were some of the challenges that that you ran into uh, getting started? Yeah, you know, it was crazy because, again, I got my start. I had nine clinics in the very beginning of my tenure in chiropractic in the late 90s. And so, you know, I was very successful at that. Um, I got into the consulting and then into the politics and, and all that stuff. And I really missed that patient interaction. And then obviously when COVID hit um, in March, April, like my world shut down. I mean, traveling and speaking at conventions, going and doing all the stuff I would done. I mean, it was just everything was shut down. So um, a really good friend of mine, we're, we're uh, on a board together, um, Dr. Tim Novelli of the Patriot Project. We were talking and he's like, man, you know, I, I really want to open clinics because I want the clinics to feed my nonprofit so I don't have to ask people for money. And I'm like, he's like, dude, I want to do that with you. I'm like, well, I got nothing but time right now. So yeah, that would be fun for me. It kind of mm -hmm. scratched an itch that I had. And so we went in and partners and uh, we created the chain uh, Patriot Chiropractic. We're only going to open five of them. Um, but I thought, well, why not? Let's do it. But you're 100% right, because my typical way of building a clinic is going out and doing talks and meeting people and networking, going into employers and explaining, which I could do none of that. So it was, uh, it was a very interesting period of time uh, for me. Everything I thought I knew, I didn't know anymore because of the way the world was. And then we just had... I had just forgotten about all the red tape of opening a clinic and getting permits and construction. I mean, it just, we were supposed to open in February. We didn't open until late May. So, I mean, it was a, and for a guy that, that isn't the chiropractor, I had people on contract because I was planning on opening in February. So it was a definitely an interesting road, but God has a plan for all things. And, and it's been, uh, it's been incredible, but you know, the biggest hurdle was how are we going to get our, our word out there? So I really started understanding social media in a different way than I did before. Um, I had always kind of taught, don't discount your services, don't give things away, value, 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 not price, price, price. And 
but the world was different. I couldn't go out and really drive value. And social media doesn't really give you an opportunity to do value unless you have a long time to build up a following and all that stuff. So we got uh, we got very creative. And um, the good news is we provided amazing care um, and, and we've grown. So we're now, right now, a year later, we're at 192 visits a week. Um, you know, we're over 250,000 in collections for the year. So I, I'm very blessed considering what that process was yeah. that we went through, but I learned a ton. Yeah, I definitely. You know, and we're getting ready to open our next one by in August. So we're uh, we're definitely getting ready to expand. And then a the goal is every six months we'll open after that. I mean, the heavy lift was that first clinic, right? Getting the systems, getting the procedures, making sure it can make money, making sure you could have the process that works for us, which we do it very very differently. I I really told Dr. Novelli when we started this, I said. I'm doing this in a way I've always wanted to do it that I never had the guts to do it before. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I'm willing to put in the money. You're going to put in the money, but you got to trust me that we're going to test some theories that I've had about how to run a clinic. And, and we did it and it's been incredible. I, I tell you, we have removed so many of the things that rob joy away from practice. Mm -hmm. and We have just made it so amazing. And, and we can get into that if you want to, but it's, it's been a, it's been a phenomenal process. My team is extremely happy. My doctors are very happy. Um, they have balance in their life. We're, you know, our goal is to get to 300 visits a week. So we're about 100 away from from our goal. Um, and then, you know, then we're just going to duplicate it. So it's it's been a it's been an awesome process. I, you know, it was a little hairy in the beginning. I ended up putting a bit more money into it than I had anticipated. But we're on the other side of that now, and, and life is good. Yeah. Well, I, you know, not that you didn't have the experience before, but if you can uh, come out the the end of the first year where you could really do no external marketing with close to 200 visits. You got to be happy with that. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. What, a uh, you guys are a subscription based model. Once they get past the, uh, the active care plan, uh, step, talk to me a little bit about that. Like what's been, uh, are there pros cons to, uh, obviously there's pros if you're doing it, but sure. uh, any like, uh, you know, cons that that people don't think about when they go into that like what what's your yeah thought? so I, there's a million definitions of subscription based so i'm just gonna I, i'm not gonna claim to be an expert in all things subscription based i only know what i wanted to create and i want it because dr novelli nor i are living off of these practices so we neither one of us draw a penny we won't draw any money from the business unit until we open our fifth unit so so this wasn't one of those things where i had to produce because i had to pay my bills so i had you know, I had dedicated cash, I had revenue that I could play with and we could figure some things out. So I wanted to create a business where the entire economics of the business drove the behavior I wanted. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I want to repeat that because I think so many people miss that when they get into their clinic. We have the best of intentions, but then survival just drives our behavior and we just start adding things and doing things, thinking that that's going to be an extra 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, hundred dollars a visit. Mm -hmm. because that's going to generate revenue. But we don't think about the back end of that. We don't think about the other work it's adding for myself or another staff person or the systems I have to buy to manage. I mean, it just, it starts getting out of control. So because of my years of experience in consulting and running clinics, I knew I had to go into this and remove all of the variables that would cause me to increase overhead. So the business model is one doctor, one staff. That's it. I don't want anything more than that. So we're straight cash, we don't verify insurances. We will print a super bill if it's asked for, but we tell people in our marketing and our communication, we don't talk about it. We don't deal with it. We don't because that's what keeps our fees affordable. So we're in Dublin, Ohio, which is a pretty affluent um, suburb of Columbus, Ohio, um, where the Memorial Golf Tournament is for those of you that watch golf. And um, so our fee is $45. So if you just pay as you go or you come in, it's $45 a visit. Um, which is equivalent to a lot of copays. So immediately when someone asks me, well, you don't take insurance, I'm like, well, I'm not going to use your card, but we operate on a very similar financial platform. It's $45 a visit. That's all inclusive of everything that'll happen in our office. So you don't have to worry about big bills. It's about the same as your copay. So it's still very affordable. <coughs> Excuse me. And so um, after that, they have the option of buying 12 visits. And if they buy 12, it drops it to $40 a visit. If they buy 24, it drops it to $35 a visit. So that's for the active care. Our active care is about two to three times a week for about two to three weeks with our docs and our techniques that we use. Mm -hmm. um, so most of our people, you know, will buy a 12 for sure because it just makes the most economic sense. <coughs> Excuse me, a tickle in my throat. Um, 
but we have a number of people that'll buy 24 for families and things of that nature. The beauty of that is it's not a prepay. I never refund money. They never expire. They're on the system. You, you just, they're there until you're done. I, I got rid of all of the potential things that could interfere between me and the patient. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever want to, and I'm not knocking care plans. I'm not knocking however anyone else does it. But if you're honest with yourself, it does create a potential area to blow up between you and the patient, which means mm -hmm. they don't do it anymore. You've got to issue refunds. You're talking them into things that, you know, maybe they, they want at day one, but you don't do a great job of keeping that value message up. So they get deeper into care and they're like, they don't remember why they bought the package to begin. All those things that just naturally happen in a practice. I didn't want any of that because I had one doctor, one staff. I, I had to remove that. Otherwise my model wouldn't work. Right. So we, we do that for the active care. Then our philosophy, <coughs> I'm really sorry. Our philosophy of maintenance is one time a week that varies from provider to provider. So, you know, I, again, I'm not pushing my belief system on anyone. That's just how often I get treated. It's how often my kids get treated. I don't know why we would not offer that to all of our patients with, with the way that we view health in our office, we're pretty neurological. We believe that ultimately health is about how your body responds to stress, mm -hmm. chemical, physical, emotional, knowing the patterns in your brain, knowing that the adjustment causes better neuroplasticity. It creates better patterns in the brain me adjusting you any less than once a week, the stress you have in your life, again, whether it's physical, chemical, or emotional, is going to rewire and create other patterns that are going to ultimately create lifestyle habits that create sickness. Getting adjusted once a week keeps that pattern in the brain where your body can be more responsive to stress. So that's just our belief system. And that's what we explain to patients on day one. So whatever period of time the doctor says, okay, we're ready to move you to once a week, that's when our subscription base starts. And so we do once a week, we charge $120. We auto run their card. It's a use it or lose it. You get four visits a month. Um, it's very cut and dry and clean. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they can get out of it at any point. They just got to let us know. But, you know, our goal is to get 300 families or individuals on our subscription. The math on that generates right around $45,000 a month. And it means I don't need any new ones. It means, you know, the whole game shifts. So we were very new patient heavy when we started to build our base, but we are right now, we just hit a hundred people in subscription that's cool. and which is a phenomenal thing for me. So that's a guaranteed $16,000 a month that I get whether someone shows up or not. Yeah. Right. So I, it changes the whole method of how you judge success in your practice. I'm not even looking at weekly visits as much as I'm looking at how many people signed up for subscription. How many plans did we sell? You know, we're, you know, those are the types of things because that tells us how our communication's going, tells us the quality of new ones we're bringing in, and it allows us to actually measure on a different level. So, so that's how we do it. I also think that the, the simplicity of the model when they, when they first start with the active care I feel like that gives you uh, a really easy way to be able to get people started. So what's, what's the, what's the, uh, uh, the conversion percentage on like, you know, uh, we're 67% with that 67%, which to me is great because a hundred percent of our new paint well not now, cause we get referrals, but the majority of our new ones are Facebook. Yeah. So that's not the best pool to pull from honestly, but for whatever reason, the ads we run, we're pulling first time patients, first time ever patients. Almost 72% of our new ones have never been to a Cairo before, oh, wow. which I love. I love those types of people. And 62% and of those either stay at least six consecutive visits or they buy a package, right? So that's how I define retention. It's six consecutive visits. So if we want to see you two times a week, they came for three weeks. Yeah. If I want to see you three times a week, they came for two weeks, right? So they're following the treatment plan. So 62% of the people are doing a, they're purchasing a plan or they're following recommendations and I'm making more money. They just don't want to prepay, uh, prepay for visits. So, um, so I'm very happy with that conversion considering where we're pulling new ones from. Yeah. Um, and we are getting to the point now where we're limiting our new patients because our volume, again, we're close to 200 a week. The other little facet about our clinics we're only open Monday through Thursday, Monday and Wednesdays. We're open 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's it. And I will never expand hours at any location. Yeah. So my team has from three o'clock on Thursday till 11 o'clock on Monday off every week. So it creates, I never have anyone asking me for time off to go to doctor's appointments, to get their tires changed, to get their kids. 
because they got they got time every single day with our hours. You can do it after three on Tuesdays, Thursdays. You can do be a four eleven Monday and Wednesday, or you can do it on Friday. Like either, I don't have the tip. Of, again, my strategy was I want to build a business where I remove all of the frustrations that you know happen with employees, with patients, with revenue. I hate refunding money; drives me insane because no one budgets for refunds. Mm -hmm. So it's just a pain in the butt. So I wanted to eliminate it, where I'll never have to give anybody any money back because I. You buy visits, they'll sit there forever. I don't care, but I'm not giving you your money back if you don't use them. Right. Subscription, it's use it or lose it. I don't, you know, and you can cancel it in a month. So I just took away all of the things that rob joy and, and our patients love it because we're not selling them a big care plan up front. We're not pushing them into things they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I really wish I didn't have that tickle. Sorry. Um, but it, it just simplifies it. They come up, our front desk just says, here's your options. You can pay as you go. You can buy 12, you can buy 24 to let us know your next visit. They come in and they either pay their 45 or they buy a package and it's very low. My docs don't have to sit there and do a heavy, heavy report of findings, trying to get them. We do it. We do a very detailed day one. I mean, we spend a lot of time explaining to them about the brain patterns. I recorded a video that every one of our patients watched that explained sympathetic, parasympathetic in a patient's terms. And um, so there is a system we have that works really well, um, but there's none of the, my docs don't dread it. I don't hold my doctors accountable to closed care, you know, and, and I'm pretty happy with being, you know, real close to 200 visits a week in a year, considering the type of year that we've had. I think if, if anybody, like if you just erase anything you just heard and all you heard was after a year of it being a year of a pandemic, at the end of the year, you're at 200 visits a week with one doctor, one staff, they'd just be like, whatever you did, I want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, all that sounds great to me because I like simplicity and like just yeah. having a good system and not having to push too hard on people. Um, but sometimes people get kind of like locked into, well, I've seen this work and I've tried that and that works for me. <clears throat> and I think that that is like, man, that's a that's an easy thing to implement if, if you if you had to do a practice. The, the hardest thing. So you asked me in the beginning, tell me some of the things you learned that aren't so good. This style of practice is not for the faint of heart. You you literally have to stop being afraid of everything the average chiropractor is afraid of. Oh, I got to take insurance. Um, patients won't come unless I do this. Or we, we adjust and we have one modality. It's called brain tap. And honestly, we encourage them to do it at home. We have chairs in our office, but only probably 15, 20% of them do it at the office. Mm -hmm. um, they all do it in the beginning. And then we, we have them buy the app and put it on their phone and then they do it at home. So we just adjust and we're open adjusting. It's all about convenience. It's all about flow. You know, we, we just painted this huge tree. I wish I had a picture to show you. I need to take a picture of it, but I had a mirrorless come in and we now have our wellness tree and we got the little copper like leaves that like donors, if you go into like schools and stuff where people donate money and they write their name, that's our wellness tree. So all of our wellness people that are on the subscription, I have 300 leaves on there. So my entire patient base is on the same mission we are of getting 300 people on a wellness path. And it's, it's, it's just a community, you know, we're just, we're all in this together. You know, we have our mission statement right on our wall that says we're about generational change and, and providing true health and, so it's, it's, it's so different because there's zero energy fighting for reimbursement. My AR is zero. I have zero accounts receivable, none, you know, and it's beautiful. I don't sell product. I mean, I could monetize more. I could start selling nutrition. I could, add, yeah. but I'm not going to, because what the brilliance is in the simplicity, because right. the minute you start doing nutrition, then you got to explain it to people. And that extends the visit time. And yes, there's money in that, but that's not my why. My why is getting people adjusted. I want 300 families coming weekly to get adjusted, singular. And I will figure out how to make money. And the reason I make money is because I keep my overhead low because I keep everything simple. And so my advice to someone, our, the reason what we do works is because it's singular and purpose. Yeah. That's it. I, I know all the other stuff. I, am, I love lasers. I, there are so many modalities that are amazing. I love infrared saunas. I love hyperbaric chambers. I love all that stuff. Right. But I will never have it in my clinic because that defeats the business model. Yeah. I am doing a singular thing. I refer to other chiros in the area that we love for that stuff. So if we do have those cases that need it, they get referred out. We do one thing. We do it great. And that's to re recondition your brain into better patterns through our techniques, through our energy that we supply, through the environment that we have. And we make and finances are never a reason not to come and get adjusted in our office. That's great. 
Um, Baron, I am at like the halfway point of this and I still have like so much to talk to you about with the practice and I don't want to like short change one chiropractic. Are you good with doing a part two? Yeah, to work yeah, yeah, yeah. All on one chiropractic. Okay. Yeah, so, totally. Let's just run it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to cut this out. So, uh, so one chiropractic is, is Baron's nonprofit and there's like a million things that he's doing and I want to make sure that we have like plenty of time. Cause he gives the best explanations. They just take a long time. <laughs> so we'll do a part two on one chiropractic. All right. Fair let's, enough. Let's, let's finish out on the office. Cause I just, I'm like, I like, I, we talked, you know, uh, when, when you guys first opened and I'm just like so proud that like, it's so it's come to such fruition. And I love the, like, you planted the flag in the ground and you're like, this is how I'm doing it. I don't care about the other stuff. I don't care what I learned at a seminar. I know my North star and I'm going to get it done. And it's just like, it's awesome to watch because so many people, including myself, uh, you know, in my path and practice, I've jumped from one thing to the next, to the next, mm -hmm. to the next. And if I had just had that North star from the beginning, uh, you know, maybe I'd have just ended up where I'm at now faster. Sure. Um, with now that things are starting to open up, because the one thing that I, I think that people uh, could really learn from you uh, beyond the things that we're already learning is that you don't have to be a chiropractor to go out and promote the practice. Yeah. Right? This is one thing that I think keeps a lot of chiropractors from getting out into their community is they personally do not want to do it or they're too busy or whatever. You are not a chiropractor. You ran nine clinics, you ran a state association, you've done consulting. Every chiropractor looks up to you at this point that I know that knows you. Um, what is it that you need, that chiropractors need to hear that they they don't need to be the all encompassing one in their practice? Yeah. And I, you know, that's a great question. I'm actually glad you asked that because when I go and speak to state associations, I'm the guy that loves speaking to the CAs because I don't have anything to sell. I have no product. I have no service to sell. I speak because I have so much I just want to share. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, my ex-wife got me a poster that says that my life serves as a warning to others. And that's true. I've made just about every mistake there is to make. And so I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, I, the others can learn from what I've learned from. And so I love sharing. And when I share with the CAs, one of the things we have to get, and I still hit this occasionally, not as much as I did, you know, 20 years ago, but there are occasionally I get the, it's not your profession because you're not a chiropractor. And I, and I'm like, you're right. That's fine. I, I, that's why I call myself a groupie. You know, I, I I'm okay with that. If that's supposed to hurt my feelings, it doesn't, I still mm -hmm. love it. I'm still going to serve. It's where I make my living. Yeah. I give way more than I get. So I'm, I'm in balance. I'm good, but okay. You're right. I'm not a chiropractor. So it's not my profession. Um, and I think that sentiment though, does run deep. There's something that happens to you guys at chiropractic school. You kind of get a little insane during that, you know, three and a half year process. My daughter's in it right now and I'm watching it happen real time. And, yeah. and, uh, but there is this idea when you come out of school that it's all on your shoulders. Like no one's going to explain it the way that I explain it. And it has to be explained my way. And this is why our profession has never unified. We can't even define a, an adjustment the same way. Like literally we will get into fisticuffs over one technique over another because we're so adamant about our purview. The beauty of not being a chiropractor, my purview is freaking blown. I mean, mm. I, I've seen everything. I've seen the craziest techniques and they work. Right. It makes no sense to me, but I watch it happen and I watch patients fork over money. I watch doctors have people driving five hours to this crazy technique. When I first got into chiropractic, I'm like, dude, these guys are psycho. They're nuts. But as I've matured in my faith, I understand knowing really what's happening neurologically, they all work. And so I don't have that unfortunate blinders on my purview of chiropractic. So it makes me way more effective when I communicate to other people about it, yeah. as well as other chiropractors. So I tell staff all the time that you and, and, and doctors, if you're watching this, I'm telling you, the first step is empowering your people. My doctor, when he hired me, he told me that's your job. Because the guy that hired me was not the practicing chiropractor in our clinic. The doctor that was practicing in the clinic I was hired for, amazing adjuster. Still to this day, probably one of the best adjusters I've ever seen. But he couldn't say his name without confusing himself. Mm -hmm. Like he was not a communicator. So the guy that hired me said, you're hired specifically to make up for his weaknesses. You are the one that is going to have to go out and talk about it. So I didn't know any different. That was my job. My job was to go and talk about chiropractic in a way that got people to want to come in. 
So because I was empowered on day one, and then you put on top of that what I was learning, which was blowing my mind, that's why I am where I am today. I'll tell you right now, it was in 1995. His name was Jim. He was a patient. Um, he came in He came in because his wife loved our Cairo, and she kept nagging him and said, either stop whining or go see the chiropractor. So he came in to shut his wife up. <laughs> 70 some years old. Um, he was an old farmer. He's arthritic. He's like, I'm old. I'm breaking down. It is what it is, but she won't leave me alone. I'm like, dude, give me two weeks. If at the end of two weeks, you don't feel like this was worth your time, we'll shut your wife up. You're only out a couple weeks. He's like, all right, I can do that. Two weeks later, he came back and he was like, he wanted to meet with me. And so I went in my office. I'm like, all right, Jim, what's going on? And he had a kind of a solemn face. I'm like, are you doing all right? He goes, well, yeah, I'm doing a little bit better, but that's not why I want to talk to you. And then he started crying, which in my household, I, I didn't grow up with men crying. I didn't know what to do. I, I was just kind of on my heels. I'm like, Jim, what's going on? He's like, I didn't tell you this when I came in, but I've had an issue wetting myself for the last 20 years to the point I don't go out to eat. We don't go on vacation. I haven't taken my wife on a date in decades. And then he really poured it on. And I'm crying at this point because it just seemed like the thing to do. <laughs> and and he, he looks at me and he goes, I took my wife on a date for the first time last night. And I wanted to thank you for giving me my life back. Nick, it floored me. I mean, I literally, I'm maybe four months into this job, just learning it. I'm a con artist. I'm just selling crap that I don't even believe in. <laughs> and and he leaves my office and I, I literally just pray right there. I'm like, Lord, what just happened? There were two things that hit me about that. And I swear to God, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. It was that one instance. The first thing was, he said, thank you for giving me my life back. He's 73 years old. What the hell is he talking about? I gave, we gave him his life back. Mm -hmm. and But it was like, what are we doing that is so powerful that that individual that came with his arms folded came in and thanked us for giving him his life back? And so I was like, I got to know this thing chiropractic because if it's that powerful to change that kind of a guy, I'm missing out because I, I, I don't understand what we're doing. So I, I at that moment, I said, I will own exactly what the adjustment does, what chiropractic and why it works. And it sent me on my journey of knowledge. The second thing he said that blew me away is he said, I want to thank you for giving me my life back. I didn't touch the guy. Yeah. And he never had that conversation with our doctor, by the way. Never. I asked Doc, I was like, well, what, what did you think about Jim today? He's like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, he not share with you? He goes, share with you, share with me what? So I told him, he's like, no, he didn't say a word. <laughs> and I'm like, what in the crap? And that right then is where God was like, it isn't about the credentials. Mm -hmm. It's about the terminology. It's about the belief. It's about the confidence. It's about the urgency in delivering the story that causes change, not the knowledge base. Right. And so I, I decided right then and there, I don't have to have a DC after my name to change the world through chiropractic. Yeah. And so that's what I've done in my 26 years. I've, I've done everything I possibly can without a DC after my name. And I have done that. I've, I've run state associations. I've been on executive committees of national associations. I've owned clinics. I've literally done everything in the profession with the exception of actually sitting at a table and adjusting and getting paid for it. Yeah. So I, I try to teach to people and doctor, the first step is empowering your team telling them that's your expectation. My team now, I tell them right now, it is not the doctor's job to retain patients, it's theirs. And they look at me and they're like, well, I said, you're not prescribing care, but you're responsible for the retention because you're the responsible for carrying the energy and the joy. And when people want to reschedule, you're like, dude, Jim, no, we got to stay on the frequency, dude. I remember how you were when you walked in here. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. They need to know that it's their responsibility to carry the energy. Clinics that do this, are because they're resting on the energy of their doctor. And the chiropractors have the worst gig on the planet. You go to school to learn how to do 10% of what you spend your time doing, mm -hmm. which is the adjusting. You gotta be an accountant, you gotta be a marketer, you gotta be HR, you gotta be all this stuff, and you're not qualified really to do any of that stuff mm -hmm. other than the doctor part, and yet, you, it all rests on you. The staff gets excited when you're excited. And then when you're not excited, the staff's not excited. And that's a bunch of garbage. If you can actually, if the doctor can get energized by their team, dude, home run, right? Like if they can show up and their team is so on fire that they, it reminds them why they're doing what they're doing. And it cuts through all the junk that they brought in with them. That's where people are worth $26, $28 an hour because they're the lifeblood of the clinic. And so I tell staff when I meet with them, I'm like, you first have to get the bug yourself. You have to accept and buy that. I don't care if you're 10 years old or if you're 90 years old, you have an ability to change someone's life through chiropractic by telling the story. And then secondly, you can be that charge. You wanna make more money, be worth more money. 
The only way you're worth more money is when you're bringing things to the clinic that no one else can bring. Mm -hmm. So step it up. Yeah. Let's go tell a story. Tell your doc you want to do a talk, do an oils talk, do whatever that you're passionate about to share knowledge and transfer with other people. That's where mag magnetism comes from. It comes from someone's sheer desire to want to give mm -hmm. with some urgency. Yeah. And so I still to this day, which you could probably tell from my energy just telling the story, but you don't want to sit next to me on an airplane. <laughs> like I, you're going to ask me what I do. And then once you ask that question, it's over. And right. you are going to go see a chiropractor when we land because I have urgency to this. I, everybody I talk to, I sent probably 37 kids to chiropractic school. My own kids are going because I, I literally believe with everything I am, every single living, breathing person on this planet needs to be adjusted regularly. Yeah. That's, you know, you have to have, you have to have the purpose, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you said something uh, a little bit back about the, when somebody signs up for care, they usually have no idea how you adjust because usually most, like most people who do care plans do a date one and a day two. And mm -hmm. on day two, they still have yet to adjust them when they're like getting someone to uh, say yes to care or not. <clears throat> so being a chiropractor has zero to do with whether they end up becoming a patient or not. It right. all comes down to that communication and the certainty. Yep. And if you can find people that are as on fire about it as you are, they'd probably do a better job. I bet you that the close rate in your, or the start rate in your uh, practice would be much higher if you were meeting with every single person. Oh yeah, if I met with them, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's not about being the chiropractor. It's no. it, whether it's about in the office or outside of the office, that question was really more about getting out into the community. Um, but it's the same thing. It's like, can they deliver the message of chiropractic or are they just kind of like sleepwalking through the motion? And, and here's what, and you said something that I want to, I want to draw home. And again, it's, it's, I think it's one of the genius that we've developed in our model. Certainty comes from clarity, right? When, when, when we're completely clear on something, yeah. we own it. That yeah. means we, you just naturally convey it at a higher level because right. there's not even a hint of concern of challenge or rebuttal once right. you said it, right? Yeah. We get so complex with telling chiropractic, like we want our staff to talk about it, but you're sitting there parasympathetic, sympathetic, autonomic, you know, all these things <coughs> that don't, they don't bring clarity and they definitely don't bring certainty. Mm -hmm. The reason people respond to me is I leave about that much space for you to doubt what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm full of crap, I'm going to deliver it in a way that you don't even dare challenge me because it seems like I know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. The majority of the people that communicate have such timidity because they don't have clarity. So the certainty doesn't come through in their tone and in their energy. Yeah. So allow your people to simplify things. Yeah. They, they don't have to say it like you would say it. There's something that happens to chiropractors in school that you think everyone you talk to wants to become a chiropractor. And they don't, mm -hmm. they just need to know why they need to spend their time and money with you. And half of the times that's in a third of the words than what you want to say. Your staff are not going to do that. Your staff, because they don't have all of that vastness of knowledge that just has this urgency of conveying, they just are going to say, all the staff's after is schedule, pay and get out of my face. Right. So simplify the process. My team, I tell them all the time, when someone says, why do we need to come, keep coming back? Your answer to them is, do you have stress in your life? Well, what do you mean by stress? Do you have kids? Are you married? Do you have a job? Well, yeah, that's why you need to get adjusted. Don't you remember what doc told you on day one? Right? It's all about getting your brain to be able to adapt to that stress so your body doesn't break down and you don't have all kinds of weird responses to the stress that's in your life. You getting adjusted once a week keeps you away from that and it allows you to keep coming in and see my beautiful face. Right. That's it. If, if your, if your uh, conversations are around pain instead of stress, yeah. you're going to have a tough time. It's over. Yeah. It's over. It's over. They're, they're, they're not always going to have pain, but they're always going to have stress. That's exactly right. And if you really truly believe that the adjustment can help the nervous system better handle stress, then you're doing them a disservice by only talking about pain. And if you don't believe that, Read Heidi Havoc's book, Reality Check. That's all I'm going to tell you. If you're if, the only people that don't believe that are, the, and I hate these titles because I don't believe in them, but our profession uses them all the time. But your evidence based or your mechanistic people tend to get lumped in the pain side, right? Mm -hmm. I don't believe they believe that way, but that's just how we love to categorize people in our profession. Yeah. 
But if, if for whatever reason you don't buy into that idea that the adjustment actually creates better neuroplasticity, which therefore stimulates the prefrontal cortex, which does actually help with overall stress management and how the body adapts to stress, read her book. It is all chuck full of research, like the best research out there, peer reviewed, published, all that stuff. And, and turn yourself back on to the power of the adjustment, because that is why we have the miracles. We don't have the miracles because there's a hard bone pressing a soft nerve. Mm -hmm. that, that's not where that comes from. It comes from the sensory input that goes into the brain and then, then, then the interpretation and then the motor output, garbage in, garbage out. When you're stimulating that and you're getting better neuroplasticity and that brain is electric because it's being fed the proper information about where your body is in space, this is why we have the miracles. This is why women are getting pregnant. They couldn't get pregnant before. This is why all of a sudden kids that have asthma don't have it anymore. This is That's what's happening because we're stimulating that neuroplasticity and the body is an amazing self-healing, self-regulating organism when it has the right information to do it. So it's not just about crimp in the hose. It's about creating better patterns in the brain. So the brain doesn't think it's always under attack. And then it can get to that, that healing and restorative state of parasympathetic. Um, and that's what the adjustment does. So you're right. There is no way to build a sustainable, fun, energy filling practice and talk about pain. Can't yeah. do it. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Um, what, gosh, what was I just going to say? Oh, I was going to talk about the the, when you are not the treating doctor, like the two of us are, mm -hmm. um, both of us own practice and don't touch any patients. And um, doesn't matter that I'm a chiropractor and you are not, it's we're still running a business with people that want systems and simplicity like the, the staff. And if you were a single doctor out there and you understand that like I am a natural uh, I like to make things complex like in my own brain yeah. and like I can keep track of them and figure them out I'm like well in this situation I do that that situation I do that but when you try to transfer that when you try to take yourself out of that and like teach that to someone else it does not transfer so if you're a single doctor and you're thinking about whether you're bringing on an associate who is a chiropractor or you'd like a, um, a staff member to handle part of day one or day two or go out into the community. All of those things that you just talked about, the, that simplification, that systemization, that is the secret to Absolutely. being able to grow fast. I mean, Absolutely. you can like plot along making it complex. And maybe like you said, you could charge $150 a visit and, and make that work somehow. But if you make things simple for people that work for you and you just let them focus on the thing that only that, that only they can do in the practice, then you're going to really start to take off. And so yeah. you can talk about that because I know that you uh, yeah you on that one. It, it, it's really about removing variables, right? Again, it, it goes back to what I was talking about, about clarity and certainty. And that applies in your procedures as well. When we're when, when you. Because it all sounds great. Like my first doctor, when we first opened, he's like, I want to do bilateral weight scales. I want to do posture pro. I, I want all this stuff. And I, and I let him go because I, the difficult for me not being a chiropractor and owning, if I step in too much, I'll just I'll burn through associates because they don't feel like they have the freedom to spread their wings. So I, yeah. I'm really good about letting them be them as long as being them doesn't take me out of my paradigm. Right. Yeah. And so but he wanted to do all this. Stuff, so I let him go. And then he started realizing how bogged down he was and that every new patient was an hour and a half. And that's great when you're opening brand new because you you're not sitting there twiddling your thumbs. But the minute you get some volume, that's not sustainable. And so I went through this process with him of real. And I asked him, he's, I was like, listen, doc, we've got to cut that down. That's got to get below 45 minutes for a new one. We will never hit our goals unless we do that. So talk to me. What, what can we give up? What do you absolutely need in order to tell the story? And it was amazing watching him in his own brain start realizing all the crap that he put in there. Not that any of it is wrong, not that any of it is bad, but was it necessary to accomplish the goal we were after? Because we do that so much in life. We go to seminars or we meet someone and they're making a billion dollars and we're like, dude, look what they're doing. Decompression. It's so amazing. And I think all of that stuff is amazing. But is that my amazing or is it just for me to congratulate them and support them in their mission? Yeah because I need to know my thing. So if you're a single doc and you're wanting to scale, the first thing I tell anyone when they want to scale, is I say, you have got to declutter. You, you can't scale when you're pulling a bunch of crap with you. 
It's impossible because it works for you because you've developed it. You've got the years of understanding why you did what you did. To transfer that to someone else, you're, you're, it's going to take them about that much time to understand what the hell you're doing too. Yeah. So you're never going to hit it. And then you get frustrated with them and they leave. If you're going to scale, if you're going to bring an associate on, you have to remove as many variables as possible, give them singular tasks to do. Same with staff. That's another reason why we have burnout in staff. We have, we, we call it, we want to be cool and we call it cross training. You know, all of my staff's cross trained. They know how to do insurance and BS. They're just freaking, it's a fire hose and they're learning how to survive at that front desk. You have so many variables because you're believing so many lies. I, I literally just talked to doc the other day because I've done a number of these interviews and people are starting to hear what we're doing. And they're like, man, I'm really interested in that. And my first thing is, Doc, I don't know that you have the bandwidth for it. He goes, well, what does that mean? I said, you still buy a lot of the lies. Why are you still dealing with Medicaid? And he's like, well, because. I'm like, because why? I said, do you enjoy your Medicaid patients? He's like, not particularly. I said, do you enjoy getting paid $10 a visit? He goes, well, not particularly. I'm like, then why are you doing it? Well, I have to. I'm like, no, you don't. And I'm not beating on Medicaid. I'm just saying you say you want to simplify, but you're buying the lie that tells you you have to keep doing what you're doing. So if you're not willing to unbrainwash yourself to believe that I have to be in insurance, that I have to do this because this is what I've always done, you're never going to scale. Because scaling is about removing variables, clarity, certainty, and moving forward with authority. And you can't do that when you're lugging so much stuff that you've just added over the years. And perfect example is people's paperwork. Like they just keep throwing crap into the new patient paperwork and they don't even know what they're asking the new patient anymore. Right. They've gone to so many seminars that they have every form that they were ever told they had to have for some legal reason that they don't know. Yeah. And it just, you know, we, that's all got to go away. Like you literally have to have a mind frame of, I am getting rid of everything I don't need to achieve my singular goal. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what you need to do. If you're, if you're that individual doctor, that's like, I want to grow. I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing okay, but I want to go to the next level. Yeah. You, you've got to unbrainwash yourself. You've got to declutter and then bring someone in with a very singular task. And that's where the scaling happens. I, I also like, I hope that people heard how quickly you plan on getting to five clinics. I mean, I, I know people that have been talking about adding a second clinic for <laughs> 10 years now. Right. Right. Because, and again, because you are not burdened by having to see patients every day yeah. because you're able to sit in your office and focus on the business instead of in the business, you can now, you, you went to 200 in a year, which to most, most chiropractors I think would be basically a miracle. Uh, and then you are going to open up a new clinic uh, every six months. And the only way that you can do that is if you're not bogged down by like, imagine you were the chiropractor. You were, oh, no, I you know, yeah, I couldn't do what I'm doing. Well, he, well not, you can see 300, 200, 300 a week yes. and then also be adding a new clinic every six months. No, you can't do it. Now, and I'll even add this because if I'm being completely transparent, so one chiropractic is going so well, I don't have time. I'm only in the clinic one day a week. I actually hired McKinsey. She's my clinic director and she's the me. So she's not a chiropractor. I've been rearing her for the last five, six years. Um, she's 25 years old. Um, she's unbelievable. It, and I found a diamond in the rough and I kept her. I, I kept finding places for her within my organization because I didn't want to lose her. I knew someday I, I was going to have that perfect thing for her. Mm -hmm. And she's just on fire for it. So she runs everything. She's my clinic director. So she goes into the new clinic, starts it up, trains the doctor, gets that all done, then hires her replacement and goes to the next. And then once all five are up, she's going to be the person to make sure that everything's working. And, and then I just get pulled in on the bigger things. Yep. Because I, I don't have the bandwidth to do that either because of everything that's going on nationally. So, yep. so again, I've duplicated. So everything I'm telling you, I've done. Like it isn't just about, because that's what people say to me. Oh, Baron, you're just, you're like that unicorn. And I'd like to think that. And I hope someday a woman will feel that way about me. But at this point, you know, I'm not. It's, it's literally the systems. It's, it's I believe what I say and I have transferred that into someone. And now I have a 25-year-old that's going to be with me forever. That's a not, she's essentially my business partner and, and she is responsible for doing all of that. And she's loving it. And I've given her the space I've trained her, I've given her the support. So it can be, it can be transposed, but you, to your point, 
you've got to be realistic to yourself and say, you can't just say, I'm going to keep practicing four days a week yeah. as the chiropractor. I'm going to open another clinic. You can't do that. You got to be, you got to be committed. You got to put someone in here to replace you. You need to go into that place, make it what it is, replace yourself again. If you're going to keep doing that and you need to have that bandwidth for you to be able to manage that without the dependency. And, and you did that better than anyone. You've launched multiple business once you finally got out of actually practicing. It's and, the way that you can. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, I just don't think, like, even if you wanted to do a second office, I wouldn't even say, go be the chiropractor. No. You don't need to. Like, no. once you've proven to yourself that the, the world is not going to end because you stop adjusting <laughs> all the patients, sure. that's one of the more freeing days of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Because as much as I love chiropractic, I hated having, like I had to be there. If I told somebody it was important that they come three yeah. times a week, why am I not there three times a week, right? right. right. Just because I wanted to go on vacation that week, it doesn't really like work that well. Right. At least in my mind, I just didn't feel congruent with right. it. Right. But as soon as you're able to replace yourself in any business, it doesn't yeah. have to be chiropractic, just yeah, yeah, yeah. making widgets, you shouldn't be the one that is like, I, I hate that with leverage media, it's so dependent on me, but it's just kind of like my life's mission. So I'm like feeling okay about it. And a lot of people feel that way with, with chiropractic, but no matter what, if you get to where you are so integral to like the running of the business, it's, it's liable to break at some point. Yeah. You're, like you said, it goes up and down. Like if my energy's up, the office is up. If my energy is down, the office is down. You know, and, and it's it's that, or you just have to be realistic about your capacity. Like, right? Yeah. I mean, there are guys that will never be anything other than a practicing chiropractor. So I don't want anyone watching this feeling like, "What is this only for entrepreneurs?" And and yes, that's kind of the nature of your podcast because you're trying to the fast track to a million. But but I need people to understand it's really don't want something you're not willing to do the work to get right. right you know that that that's all i'm saying is have a realistic if you're not don't sit there and listen to everything i've said this far and be like man i want that and then in the back of your mind be like but i can't do that i can't do that i can't i'm like no you don't like be okay either manage your expectations or do the work yeah I, I mean, for, for the answer. longest time i when i was in practice i like had this idea of i wanted to get the 300 visits yeah. And, you know, I got to 75 visits and retired. Like, I, was <laughs> like, I was like, I'm good. I'm not, anyone does more than this. This is, this is like physically impossible. You know? oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and I was in my mind, but, but our office finally, like it's been a, it's been a journey of all journeys. Uh, you're, you're in a, you're in a hot bed there, buddy. Yeah. But the, the last month, uh, we, you know, last month we cracked 300 for the first time and it was just like, it was such a moment because like, especially the associate that I've had with me for a long time, it was, we always had talked about it and talked about it and we finally have the systems and the team in place that allow it to happen. We always could have done it. Yeah. It's just that we weren't willing to spend exactly. the, money or the time or the, whatever it was, we weren't willing to do the work to get the 300. Now we are. And so we are, you know, and that's such a great point, dude, because it, Growth has nothing to do with time, meaning, oh, it's just not your time. Right. That, that's that's not true. Yep. I, it, it's there all the time. Again, perfect example. I opened in the middle of a pandemic. Yep. And on top of this, I went through a doctor change. We didn't even talk about that. My first doctor only made it five months. Yep. And then I changed doctors, which you would think would make it dump. And so, I mean, we my path has not been great, but I was so committed. As you stated, I put my flag in the poll and I got rid of someone I knew was not going to get me there. Yeah. And I brought someone, you know, I, I just, I, I wasn't going to be that guy that hated my doctor. And so, you know, it was good for him. I'm happy for him. He's much happier where he's at. Mm -hmm. And I've got somebody now that's just freaking killing it. So, and if he chooses to go someday, I'll find somebody else. You know, I'm not, I, I just, I, I, you got to understand that it has nothing to do with, you got to pay your dues. It's not your time. Yeah. It has everything to do with the work and has everything to do with your commitment yeah. to your work. And the unique thing I have, you know, that I don't think everyone should, if you're a new student that's watching this podcast, yes, you're fully capable of, of being at 200 in your first year. It happens all the time. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a realistic thing. I have the unique perspective of 26 years of a lot of information, watching a lot of things happen and I'm financially independent and I'm good. So I didn't have pressures that the average person has when they open a clinic. Yeah. I was totally okay throwing hundred grand into everything 
and having the nice stuff, having all new stuff. And I would never tell anyone to open the way I opened. Yeah. I open the way I open because I have the means to do that without it stressing me. Yeah. But I, it's not about time. It's about doing the work. Yeah. And and if the, the number one thing, if you miss everything else I say in there, know what you believe and don't let anyone talk you out of it. Evolve, let life you shape it. What I believed at 20, I don't believe at 45. I, mm-hmm. that, that evolved. But I didn't change it because someone else had a shinier car and they said, do that because this is how I got my car. Right. Luckily I never did that. And that's what I don't want you to do here. I don't want you to pull little things out and be like, well, he did it and he's successful. So I'll be successful. That's why a lot of consultants don't work because they want you to do what they did, but you'll never be as successful as they were because you're not them. Right. You, you've got to believe in you, what you want. Don't let anyone lie to you about it. Anything's possible. I've seen the craziest clinic makeups make so much money and do the craziest things because they just believed it and they communicated it with authority and certainty and clarity. Yeah. So that's the key is figure out what you love. You love insurance, do insurance. You love personal injury, do personal injury. If you love pain, do pain. I'm good with all of that, but stick to your thing and believe it, remove the variables and be absolutely straightforward so that your team can embrace it, have certainty and clarity when they communicate, which brings believability in their terminology but just simplify, simplify, simplify whatever it is you're in love with. Uh, I could probably go on for another hour and I have to like go because I have another meeting. Uh, but that was an awesome uh, like ending point as well. Um, Baron, like I just think that you are an inspiration uh, to people, especially people that uh, want to become more, more bold in their defense of chiropractic mm-hmm. or their promotion of chiropractic. Uh, we need to get your thinking a little bit changed on like using social media to get that fire and that energy out there. Cause I don't think it would take as long as you think, because as soon as your message started hitting your communities, uh, they'd be, they'd be making their way in the door. So, uh, I hope everybody got as much value out of that as I, I mean, I'm over here like, yeah, I need to simplify this and simplify that. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate your time, buddy. And we are going to, we're going to have you come back on to walk through one chiropractic because that is like, that's an exciting thing. Yeah, there's a profession as a whole. Good so. stuff there, man. Yeah. Absolutely. And like, if you thought Baron was passionate about the practice <laughs> yeah. you did one day a week, you should hear him talking about one chiropractic. So, yeah. But Baron, anything else you want to uh, add before we uh, sign off? Yeah. You know, I just, you know, it's a, it's an old BJ quote, but I, I you know, I mean it. Thank you for loving what I love. Um, my personal life mission is to make chiropractic the number one healthcare choice in the world. And, and it's been such an amazing 26 years. Uh, the chiropractors are some of the most incredible people I've ever met. They're my best friend. They're everything in my life. And so if you're watching this, I don't, I don't know where you're at in life. You could be knocking it out of the park. You could be wondering if you're going to stay open in a month. I just hope you'd never lose sight of the power of what chiropractic really brings. Whatever your belief system of it is, it's really second only to the gospel in my life as far as life-giving, purpose-breathing topic of chiropractic. So if you're, if you're caught in the muck of life, dude, reach out to me. I would love to have a phone call with you. I will answer the call with anyone. I have nothing to sell you. I don't do consulting. I don't do any of that stuff. But if, if you're at that point where you just don't know if you're going to stay in, I'd love to talk with you. Just, just know you're loved. Know that there is a brotherhood and sisterhood out there of amazing people that are, that are really causing our world to vibrate at a higher frequency. And, and I just appreciate all of you for taking the time to listen. Dr. Nick, thank you so much for the opportunity. I, I never turned down an opportunity to kind of share what's on my heart. So I appreciate you allowing me to do that with your tribe.